take one million? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> my name's Tracy Campbell. Welcome to My Sweet Home Living. If you have been trudging through the last 15 minutes with me trying to go live, I so apologize. However, it's completely out of my control today. So all we're going to do is laugh and we're going to just keep on trucking <laughs> until uh, FB gets its act together. <laughs> all right, you guys hop on in here. I hope that you guys can find me on this uh, broadcast. Who knows? Who knows? Hope you're here. If so, please let me know by leaving a little note down there and um, give me a shout out. I hope you guys can find me. This is take one million. <laughs> take one million. Anyway, we're going to hop right into this because now we've already lost so much time. we got to truck it on. Truck it on. Today's inspiration, we're making some DIY feed sacks, a little primitive decor for fall. Uh, these were my inspiration pieces. I think they're cute tucked in a little vignette on a tiered tray in a little hutch or in a centerpiece display. Tons of little uses that you can uh, find to put these for the fall season or all throughout the season, depending on what uh, design that you print on yours. I'm going to show you how that you can do these at home as well. If you have a home printer, that's all you need. A home printer and probably a computer or some device to print from to send a, a, an image to your printer. Okay, so hop on in here. Let's get busy because time's a wasting. <laughs> time's a wasting. And I am, I do not have my clock in front of me. We have exactly 30 minutes. Exactly 30 minutes today. So let me show you. I have purchased a design on Etsy. You can design your own. Find a freebie, free printable on, on uh, online. Just by doing like a search, I found a cute little vintage printable label design from a designer on Etsy called Chocolate Bunny. I believe that's it. Chocolate Bunny or Chocolate Rabbit? I can't remember it. Shoot. I should have written it down. Anyway, is this not the cutest? This is printed on regular standard size copy paper, printer paper. Nothing fancy, right? Anyway. You would want to print this on material. We're going to print it on fabric, you guys. Did you know that your home printer can do that? It sure can. It sure can. I have been on a muslin fabric kick lately. I'm not seeing any comments. I'm so sorry. I'm hoping that they will pop up in just a moment. Oh, there we go. I see the first one. Stephanie Brooksmith. Hello. Thank you so much. You're back. You're back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for hanging with me. I am back. Take one million here. I tried it two more times and it just would not stay connected. So I kind of had to hop off and try another another route of getting here but we're here <laughs> if you guys would please spread us out because i know there were we had over a hundred watchers when we had to uh when we were interrupted and had to end that broadcast so hurts my heart hurts my heart but hopefully they'll be back uh if not we'll catch the replay hey miss beth how are you from the crafty edge i am back and we're printing today we're making our own little primitive diy feed sacks but we're gonna do it fall style today i have been on a muslin fabric kick lately. I mean, I love using this stuff for all kinds of things. You all have seen, I've made several projects um, with these so far, and it's so inexpensive. It's, you can do all kinds of things with this, you guys, and no no sewing machine required <laughs> either. <laughs> um, so you can really make it as simple as you want. So what I have done is I have taken, I would wash and dry this first before I use it. I have not done so, but I would recommend to do that. I have cut this down to eight and a half, like the size of a printer copy paper size okay all I did is I used this for um, as a template and just kind of traced around the edges okay and that's what I did all right and it is cut down to size the next thing that you're going to need is freezer paper you guys freezer paper so I just I have laid out um, just a dish cloth you know an old towel an old rag it, something that's large enough to cover your work surface okay uh, and protect it from the heat because you are going to be using an iron. <laughs> You're going to be using an iron. So I have already done this, but I kind of want to walk you through the steps so that you can kind of see exactly how I did. Hi, Miss Jeanette. Yes, Miss Tiffany. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, and my comments are frozen again, but that's all right. I know y'all are here and I know you're coming and I'll see them all after we're finished. Um, so what I have done, I don't need the printer paper right this moment. Now I need my little piece of muslin material, okay? I'm going to lay it on, you know, freezer paper has two sides to it. One side is really, really glossy, and that's the side that is going to kind of give us our adhesive effect, okay? So you're going to lay 
Okay, the wrong side of your material. Now, I'm not, I don't have a right or wrong side because they're both the same. But if you have a certain material that has a print on it already that you're printing on top of, you might keep that in mind, okay? Uh, but you would lay it down on your freezer paper. Let me make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing here, okay? Um, yes, you can. You can, everybody. You can use any printer. Um, it's it's super easy. Okay, you just have to cut your piece of material down to the the size of, of a standard sheet of paper. Okay, and once you do that, it's easy peasy. Okay, so I'm laying this on the the glossy side of my freezer paper. And hello, Miss Margaret. Uh, hey, Miss Rula. And then you're going to use a medium heat setting on an iron. Okay. Now here's what I've done, and I have done this, and I'm going to tell you the trick to this. You're gonna have to do it twice, sort of, the ironing part of it. Once, I like to do it like this, okay, with the fabric facing up, okay? I go over it, my iron is not on because I've already done this process. You're gonna go over it, let it sit, and uh, make sure that you go to the very edges and the corners very well because you want this glossy, uh, is going to be the adhesive that is melting onto your fabric. It sort of gives a little soft adhesive. Nothing that's going to ruin your your material. It's not going to ruin your iron or anything like that. Okay, so just a medium heat and all around the edges you want to get it done good. Doing it this method way first will help prevent wrinkles. Okay, so once you do that, you're gonna take your scissors and you're going to, this will be stuck once you iron it. My iron is not on today. We're just doing a sort of a, a quick demonstration of this section of the process. So then what you will do is you will take your scissors, you will cut, cut it out because it's gonna be stuck. Your material is gonna be stuck to the freezer paper. It's glorious. Now not in, it's not gonna be stuck extremely hard. It's just enough to hold it in place while it goes through the printer, okay? This is just standard freezer paper, okay? So, then what you're gonna do, this is gonna be stuck, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over to the back side, and you're gonna do that same medium heat to your, to your piece on the back side of the freezer paper at this point. Now, what this will do, the first step of the ironing, help prevent wrinkles. This step helps e that adhesive even stick better to the material so that it has a good contact when you get ready to run it through your printer, okay? So here we go, we're just doing this, we're going all around the edges. Now you don't wanna speed through this process because obviously the longer and slower that you move your iron over the material, the better adhesion it will have, you know, the better contact that it will have between the freezer paper and the material, okay? So once you get that good and stuck, check your corners, okay? Go around, make sure all of your corners are stuck down good, all of your edges are stuck down good, okay? Then let it cool for just a little bit. It won't take long, okay? Once you let it cool, it's gonna look just like this. This is a piece that I've already actually ironed and it's, see, it's all smooth. My corners of the material and the freezer paper are all intact. I don't have any little areas where the fabric is wanting to pucker up, okay? So then what we're gonna do, um, then we're just gonna trim it just a little bit because you know your, your fabric might not be exactly the same size as your freezer paper. The only key here is that you have to make sure that this piece is not any wider, you know, it's not any wider than a standard sheet of printer copy paper, okay? If it's too wide to fit in your paper tray of your printer, it's not gonna work. It's gonna get um, jammed. Your printer's gonna get jammed, okay? So as long as it is narrow, now mine is a little bit bigger. Um, let me hold this up to this. Just match it up to the size of a standard sheet of printer paper, and you'll see mine, mine overhangs a little bit, so I would need to go through and trim that down, okay, so that it will feed through my printer properly. Here's the thing, you need to make sure that your printer is set to print on photo paper and um, 
sometimes you it would work better if you print it on the best quality. You know how you can have like draft or normal or best printing quality. Sometimes print uh, best in best quality. Ugh, I'll say that in a second. Gives you a better look. Okay, I didn't change my my ink settings. I just left it black and white, normal, and printed it on, as if it was on photo paper. Photo paper tends to, it, it, your printer will print a little bit slower and give a little bit more detail, just as if it was printing an actual photo, even though we're not printing a photo. Uh, we're printing on fabric, but your printer doesn't know that. <laughs> we're just tricking it. So, once you put this into your printer, you have to know how your printer operates to how, to, how you feed it through. You want to feed it through in the right way that it prints on the fabric itself, okay? Now my printer, it has a little tray. I'm looking over here because it's right here beside me. It has a little tray at the bottom and I put my paper in like this and then it goes into my printer and feeds up like this and prints on this side and then comes out, okay? So I have to actually place mine in upside down for it to print properly, okay? Here's the thing, you can make it, you can, when you are printing an image, you can choose what sizes to print it in. So you can make a small version of this, you can make a medium, large, any size you want, okay? So let me show you what I've printed. I printed off two, these are about five by seven size. I printed off two per uh, sheet on this one. So I'm just gonna trim this down and you can print as, print this as many times as you want because it's your pattern that you have purchased so you can use it over and over, okay? Um, so there we go. So we could make two bags out of this and you can already start to see, all you have to do now is just to peel this freezer paper off the back and it's just like you purchased the material already printed. Is that not cool? That's not cool? Um, and so, the first time I printed this, I forgot to uh, resize it, and it printed it. Woohoo! It printed it full size. But isn't that amazing? <laughs> that is printed on a home printer, you guys. Home printer. Is that not amazing? So now the 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 uh, design that I purchased on Etsy, it has several different variations of it. You could print it just plain black and white. You could print sort of like a. It had like a. It had lines and scratches and things like that to kind of make it look vintage. And you can see, let me show you this up close. You can see all of these, all of this little discoloration and all these little speckles, that was already on the design, okay? This right here, let me show you what the material looked like. This is what the material looked like when I fed it through my printer. And this is how it turns out once I feed it through, okay? So you can see it already has, whoop, this one, it already has a little bit of, you know, the distressing, a little bit of the discoloration already on there. Is that not cool? So you don't have to do a whole lot to it, you know? Um, now, I don't know about the washability of this because it all depends on what kind of ink that you have in your home printer. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take mine and I'm just going to use a little bit of a spray uh, sealer. You could use a spray fabric sealer. I don't have a spray fabric street bleh, spray <laughs> fabric sealer. Words are hard today, you guys. <laughs> Never thought to print directly on fabric. Yes, it's an amazing little trick. Um, Tammy, you wish you had a printer. I'm telling you, you can pick one up at, at, at Walmart. You know, really inexpensive. And um, if it's a wireless printer, like I have a wireless one uh, I purchased on Amazon, and I didn't even have to have a computer to print to it. I can actually, this little printer has an app that I download onto my phone. So I can print, I can send the prints directly from my phone to my printer and it prints it out for me. How nifty, you know? Now you have to be a little bit tech savvy or have somebody to show you how to do it a time or two. But after that, it's super easy. It really is. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of this spray Mod Podge and that'll kind of seal the ink on it for for what the way into, I intend to use it. I don't really plan on washing this, <laughs> really. So uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but just in case that ink, you know, were to get wet or something splatter on it, um, it would kind of keep it somewhat protected, okay? Keep it from, that ink from bleeding a little bit. Okay, where's the fan? <laughs> I need 
some ventilation in here. <laughs> Hello, Miss Clarice. How are you? My comments are so wonky today. I have to swipe them back and forth, and sometimes they'll kind of kick in gear and sometimes not. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Jeanette. You like this idea? I thought you guys would. Whew. It is. You need to probably do that outside. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little bit of heat to this real quick. And then, so, of course, if you're making a feed sack, you're going to need a backside, which I think it's pretty cool. Let me show you these. Ugh. These little um, feed sacks have, uh, like, a coordinating fabric on the backside, which I think gives it a lot of character. Um, and I'm being plain Jane today. I'm, I don't have anything like that. But you can use, like, a little ticking fabric on the backside. Um, where did, how did you keep the fabric stiff. Oh, you missed it in the beginning. Uh, Valerie, you use freezer paper. You'll go back and watch the replay and you'll see how I did that to get it stiff enough to run through the printer. Okay. Um, it's super easy. If you have freezer paper and an iron, you're good to go. <laughs> yes, that's all you got to do. Okay. D Denny says she bought her HP wireless printer at Walmart for 39 bucks. There you go. You can do that and I'm telling you guys, it's like a rabbit hole. You get on hooked on these patterns, I'm hooked. <laughs> you can find all kinds of things to do with these. Uh, and if you are a creator and you have like a booth or if you sell crafts at a craft show, these are so inexpensive to make. So inexpensive to make. So you can see. And they're small, so you don't have to price them very high. And um, anybody can kind of use these little gadgets, you know, these little, uh, these little feed sacks. You know, they can fit all kinds of decor. So they're really good resellable. Um, is that a word? Resellable? <laughs> okay. So I sprayed that Mod Podge on the front, and that kind of gave it a little bit stiffer texture. Now, you don't have to do this, but I probably would. You guys know that I've been on the grunging kick lately, right? Um, I, need, I should have brought my... Uh, I'm just going to... Nope, I find it again. <laughs> I should have brought my uh, craft paper over here. Ugh. Ooh, that freezer paper is tough. Okay, so I need to grunge this up just a little bit. So you've got several options. Ooh, way over here in the corner of my table. You can, of course, use the traditional um, type of coffee grunge, right? That's what I will probably use on this one uh, because... It's cough, instant coffee, vanilla, and cinnamon all mixed together, okay? Um, and it gives it a wonderful smell, which is perfect for the fall. You print on tissue paper and rice paper, too. That's awesome. Yes, this is muslin. Yep. Uh, so did you iron the freezer paper? I ironed the freezer paper on to my piece of fabric. Okay, this is the back side. This has the freezer paper. This is the material. Once you iron it on with a medium heat iron, it adheres to cut it down to paper size, standard printer paper size, and feed it through your printer, and it will print on there. Marvelous. <laughs> okay, so I'm going with a little bit of this bigger one, uh, this, the bigger one, so you guys can kind of see the process that I'm going through. You're welcome. Um, lots of, yes, there are, Dini. You're, are, you're so right. There are tons of free printables that you can find um, on Pinterest. You're exactly right. All right, so all I'm going to do, I kind of like to have a little bit of a, a rusty brownish colorings on mine. So all I'm doing, you guys, you've seen me use this a thousand times. I love this stuff. Distress Oxide, my favorite color, vintage photo. If you want to take a screenshot, there you go. <laughs> Um, it's perfect for little projects like this, and I, I, I would typically use my, my grunging solution for this, but since we're short on time today, I don't want to go over, and we would need a little bit of drying time, and I know I don't have that kind of time today. We have about 10 minutes to finish this up, so I want to make sure, um, that you guys can see a finished project before we're done today. So, I'm going to take the shortcut method today, okay, um, and use this Distress Oxide, which is the amazing thing about this stuff. It gives it an awesome, grungy look in a matter of just seconds, you guys. <laughs> in a matter of seconds. I'm trying to make sure I'm, if my comments are working or not. You never know these days. All right, so, I've used a little bit of 
my vintage photo. Oh, nose is tickly tickly. So now what I'm going to use is just a tiny bit um, of a color called Rusty Hinge. We're going to test it. Oh, shoot. I forgot to grab. I meant to grab a few little Q-tips. I like using Q-tips for these. And I did not do that. Now, Rusty Hinge is just what it says. It's got this orangey, rusty color. It's not a bright orange because I like really deeper earth tone colors. And so all I'm going to do here, I need a little bit of water on this to kind of dilute the ink a little bit. These inks are water activated. I'm just kind of testing this out on my little work mat here. Let me tell this, because I don't want a big glob to show up on here. Um, and then I, oh shoot, um, I did not grab my little, I should have grabbed my little um, applicator is what I'm trying to think of. The word just escaped me. Uh, so I'm going to use this and kind of just go over my pumpkin ever so slightly. I don't want anything big and bold and I'm not even going to color in the whole pumpkin because I want this to look like a vintage uh, print where it's faded. Okay, the colors are real muted and just barely there. Okay, now this one over here that I did first is obviously a little bit bright for me. But the good thing about that is, is I can reactivate it with a little bit of water and just take a paper towel and soak some of that out. Okay, that's the amazing thing about this, these products. Love them in that way. They're very forgiving and so versatile. Okay, and I don't have any paper towels with me or I would show you exactly what I mean. All right, just ever so slight color on there. Now that's a little too dark, like I said, um, but we can work on that later and kind of fade that off with just a little bit of water and paper towel, just a little bit to kind of soak that off. If you want to, I can, I can take this little blending brush and kind of go over it as well and it will kind of soften a little bit more just a little bit and then if you like a little bit of that splattered look I like to use this same it's the same brand it's distressed oxide spray so it's the same product only it's in a liquid spray form okay and I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit and I'm not going to get up super close the closer you are the bigger your speckles and globs will be. I want it to be farther apart, so I want it to be a little bit more of a subtle effect, okay? So I'm gonna start farther away and give just a few spritz around. So you can see that I'm really kind of focusing around on the edges, right? All right, now you can totally blend this in a little bit as it's, you know, as it's drying. Take it and, and just swirl it if you want. Now this, I probably should have waited a minute because mine is, was I forgot I added that layer of Mod Podge and so it's taking it a little bit longer to dry so I have a little bit of more workability time before that spray dries. And so I wasn't planning on that. I was ex A lot of times you kind of have to work fast with that spray, it will really dry quick on you. Uh, <clears throat> so we've, we probably added a little too much crunch to that, <laughs> but you can totally see where you can take it a little bit lighter um, if you want to. So this is the coloring that we started with, and this is what we have after we've grunged it up, okay? Super easy. No matter. We have about six minutes, so let's finish this up. We already peeled the freezer paper off of the back side of this, so what I need is another piece where did it go? My other piece of um, material, okay, um, for the back side. Now, for this, I am going to use, um, I would recommend using fabric glue. I cannot find my fabric glue sticks to save my life, you guys. Um, I was still, ooh, ooh, I was still hunting for them today and still couldn't find them. <laughs> So, put your wrong sides of, of material together, okay, and I want to leave the bottom of mine slightly open because that's where I'm going to stuff it and fill it from the bottom. 
So make sure that you kind of keep in mind where your your design is laying. Okay, this is the top side for my for me. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue along the the top edge, and then lay that down, and I'm going to press it outward. Okay. All right, same thing with the sides. Let's start here. Run it down. And then seal it down. Push it from the center out. Now, be careful because of the hot glue, of course. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to this side. Um, my comments, gosh darn it, you guys, I'm so sorry I'm not seeing your comments today. I apologize. It's just out of my control today, unfortunately. Okay. Now, we can fill this with, um, paper shreds, okay, shredded paper. Uh, I do have some stuffing that I'm going to use for mine. Woohoo, we got a little bit of glue right here <laughs> on the paper. All right, so you can see I've left my bottom open because that, that's where I'm going to stuff it. Now, I do have a little bit of overhang, and I'm going to trim that extra off because that will help it lay a little neater and cleaner when we go to fold it um, right side out here. And I'm going to fill the bottom with a little bit of beans, uh, just dried beans, so it gives it a little bit more stability and will sit upright, okay? Okay, now let's turn this right side out and let's hope that I put enough glue on there that it'll stay intact. If not, you can just touch it up. Fabric glue obviously is will be your friend. Yeah, I didn't put enough right there. Goodness, goodness, goodness. come on, cooperate with me. <laughs> If uh, we hadn't have lost those 15 minutes at the beginning of this trying to get to get going without the video interruptions, we would be much better off here. We'd be able to finish this no problem. Okay, that's my timer. We've got two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. And then Miss Tony from the Painted Roadrunner is coming up next. I know she'd love to see you guys over on her page today. You can head over to the Craft on the Clock group and find her there. Um, now obviously you can distress the back sides of these little feed sacks as well. Okay. Now, is that not cute? Or is that not cute? <laughs> no, ah, oh, my glue is coming good. I'm watching this. Where'd my little stuffing go? Um, oh my gracious. Right behind me. <laughs> it's right behind me. Um, yes, you put the right sides together. You're right. I'm sorry. I don't know what I said, but there's no telling. <laughs> but you put your right sides together and then uh, glue them, and then you can turn it right side out, and you'll get the whole little effect. Now, feed sacks are kind of meant to be floppy, right? So I'm just putting just a little bit of stuffing in mine, and then I'm going to fill the bottom with beans. Okay, just think of it like a little bean sack. Okay, now then I would glue these back together the best way that I can. I'm not going to have time to show you guys that part of it. But then when you flip it back over, your little beans settle back to the bottom. And they won't fall out if you glue it. <laughs> and then there's your little feed sack. Now is that not the cutest little thing ever? Now if you want your material a little bit squashier, you, once you wet it, and, and you can wash and dry it, and your material will be a little bit, um, a little bit more worn feeling. Okay, mine is kind of crisp because I did not wash mine to, you know, from before I started. But is that not cute? So you can set it in a little vignette with some little pumpkins or some little um, fall picks, little floral picks or whatnot. Set it beside a vintage little scale. That would be darling. That would be darling. 
Um, so, I hope this has given you a little bit of inspiration today. Sorry for the time. Sorry for the video problems today. We'll get it better. I'll be back with you guys tomorrow at 11.15, I believe, to finish our crow. And uh, I'll take a picture of this in a little vignette and show you the finished project today. Okay, stay tuned for our next presenter, Miss Tony from the Painted Roadrunner. Bye, y'all.